There you are. Right. This morning we've got a common problem to sort out. A problem that some of you may have come across before. The damaged brake. Well, this is our damaged brake work. As you can see, it's all pitted and damaged and bits missing. So there's two ways that you could treat this. The first is to smash these out completely, throw them away and replace them with more bricks. The second way is, is to remove them very carefully and then turn them over because on the back side of these the chances are you've still got a good brick. I'm going to use a plug-in chisel and we're going to carefully cut around the brick so we can release it. Now you can use an old wood saw or that type of thing. I do have a mechanical gadget but I've not, uh, not brought it today where I can saw around that. But we're going to go with the, um, the eco-friendly chisel today. These are um, totally carbon free. They run on cheese sandwiches and tea. Knocking the chisel all the way in, tap it to the side. And that breaks away that lime mortar. All the way to the back of the brick and across and you just keep repeating that The thing is with lime mortar, especially old stuff like this, it is quite soft. So it's easy to remove it with the likes of a plug-in chisel. I wouldn't recommend using this particular method if it was a, a cement mortar and you were trying to trying to get a brick out. Um, you're better off then using a maybe a, a thin blade on a grinder or um, a masonry saw. If you look at the edge of your chisel, it's on a it's on an angle. Now it's not like that because it looks nice. It's like that for a reason, and you, you learn how to to turn and move the chisel around with each particular job you're using it for. You know, it, it'll it'll because it's a wedge, it'll dig in one way. So you turn it around, it'll dig in the other way. For example, we're going up against the perp here, so we're going to use the flat edge of it, the long edge of it, against the perp. And what it will do, it will push away the mortar that way. See how nice and easy that went in there. And now what we do is we're just giving it all a good cleaning out sure we've got all that mortar out of there to the back of the brick <sighs> and there we go you can see that brick 
can now be reversed. So we put it in that way. So we've got the nice bases there and there. So we know that's an original brick to the building from 1864. So we're not using a modern brick. We're not having to source bricks. You can't always do this, but 90% uh, of the time, if you're careful, you can. And there you go. Now this here is flat copper. And it's part of what was an electrolysis system, which runs round the whole of the property. And the idea behind it is that it puts a little trickle charge of electricity through the copper and that somehow stops damp. I think we've covered this subject before, so we'll go no further. Right, so we're now ready for uh, resetting our bricks. We've got our lime mortar, very gritty. Don't know if the camera picks that up, but uh, it's very gritty mortar. You don't, you don't want fine sand with it, really. <clears throat> and then we'll just dampen up the end of this brick because it is rather dry, but we have had a lot of rain. We're going to be needing some more water in the old pump bottle. Let's that out. There we go. Give her a bit of a splash of water. And that's the first one back in. Now this mortar is quite stiff as well. We don't want it too wet because down at the bottom here, this wall is quite wet. So I don't want the lime starting to run out of the joint before it's had a chance to get a bit of air to it and get a bit of a set on. Wipe a little bit on the dirt. We don't need too much on there. We can always put some in from the top. Again, find the nice, nice end to the brick. Hmm. That's a better one. There we go. Let's have a look at that one. Will that one be better there? Yes. Again, some at the back there for the perp. If we look at our perp there, we know we've got enough brick there to cover that gap. Some pushed underneath. Top. Probably won't stay on there, but we'll push them in after with the uh, <laughs> slight like little bit of. Uh, damage to it there but it's, it's it's more of a 
more of an indent in the brick than a chip. So we'll let that go and we'll use it. On the uh, top of the brick again. Yeah, see if she'll fit. I have to pack her up a bit there, so. Use some of the old uh, iron mortar that's come off. Just push it in there as a temporary packing, and then we'll fill that in with the old uh, the old pointing trowel. Same at that end. Lift her up. Bit of a bit of brick there. That'll do. Now I could take the brick out and redo the bed and and everything, but I think it had just pushed the mortar off again. Because it's a bit, you know, not really designed for laying brick, this mortar. It's more for uh, pointing and floats, etc. Right, a bit of a there and there. Right, okay. So that's the corner back up. So what we're going to do next is joint it all up with the old, uh, the old pointing trowel. Oh, if we were back in the olden days, this is exactly how we'd have done it. So it's no different today, changing the brick. The only difference is the material, obviously, is lime. We get our extremely thin trowel. Just put it to the edge of the brick. And carefully fill that joint there right to the back with your mortar. What that's going to do, that's going to stop any of these wanting to drop. It can't go anywhere because it's full of mortar. Same again there, plenty in, making sure that she's not hungry for mortar. And we just keep doing that on each brick where we know it's not going to have any in. For example, where it's met another brick. Bit awkward to do down there. I'll get into the old hawk, so I'll have to do it a bit at a time. Oh, no, it's not too bad that one, to be honest. Very important with lime that it's got something to go again. But when you compact it, it doesn't shoot back, and you do have to compact it. Change trowels. <sighs> Problem with these old commons is they're all, you know, they're not a nice square neat brick like modern ones. You know, which adds to the character and everything, but they're a bit of a bugger to try and get spot on. Well, once pointed up and knocked back with a churning brush, it'll look uh, it'll look fine. Mm -hmm. 
it's got a, a brick that's saturated you can't take in any more water and you've got a little pocket inside there a little hollow inside your, your bedding the water will sit in that and as your brick starts to dry out that water will soak into the bricks so it's going to take the brick a lot longer to dry out than it should so if, if, if the beds are all completely full there's no pockets where water can sit Plus, you know, it's a, a good solid structure as well. Now, if this was a, a mortar mixed up with Portland cement, for example, this by tomorrow could take major amounts of rain. Wouldn't be a problem. And it'd be fairly stiff as well. However, it's not, it's a lime mortar. And this is going to take about 38 days to cure. But we've got to get it to cure slowly. We don't want it to set fast. Set, setting fast basically compromises the, the mortar itself. The, the lime will fail. It dries out too quickly. And if the lime fails, well, obviously your mortar fails, which we don't want. I mean, this, this wine pointing isn't going to last forever. Of course it's not. And the whole idea of pointing is that your pointing needs to be softer than your, your brick or your stone that you're pointing the mortar into. If it's not, if it's harder, what will happen is, in the big picture of things, erosion, etc., the bricks will erode and the mortar won't. And you've probably seen it where you've got all the bricks have gone, you've got the perfect pointing around them, but the bricks have gone, they're, they're perishing. And that's because it's a hard, Portland cement based mortar, very hard rock. Whereas this, this stuff will erode. That's what it's supposed to do. Not for quite some time, but it will erode. And then it'll be repointed again with lime. But the bricks will still be there, the bricks will be perfect. Because the line isn't compromising the right work. It's a lot softer. Right, so we've got it to that stage now where we've, we've pointed up. I know I'm not on that side yet, but, you know, come on. So we've got to that stage where we've pointed up. We leave that now for maybe a couple of hours. And then we give it a good whack with the old churning brush. It looks like this. Somebody earlier, well, in fact, about two months ago, but it ends up like that. The churning brush. Now, what you can do if you want it so it's a nice flat finish, you've still got to compact it with your churning brush. Still got to do that. There's no ifs, buts, or maybes. And what you could do, you could either use your good old pointing trowel. Not quite as big as that maybe, but use your pointing trowel after you've done it with the churning brush and then run them joints in. Well, the preferred method is you can use a piece of flat stick, a bit of oak or some sort of hardwood, which is your thickness of your joints or slightly smaller, and just rub it. It will perch first and then rub it in, and that that will flatten it off for you. I don't really recommend doing it dead, dead smooth because, again, you know, you're you, you creating problems. You're closing that up. You want it open, really, so that water can get in and out as easily as possible. There you go. Knackered corner. Repaired corner. And that's how you go about it. I hope that was some help to somebody out there that's uh, thinking about changing a few brick in the back of the house. And they weren't quite sure on how to go about it. And for those of you that aren't doing that, and you just found it interesting, well, I've entertained you. And there you go. That's that uh, 
a little bit of the corner completely repaired using traditional methods and natural materials and of course the bricks that we've used or the bricks that came out have just been reversed Hmm, right, that is technically known as a churning brush and that is what we use to beat, not the wife, to beat the mortar, like so. And what that's doing now, it's compacting that mortar, it's pushing it back back to it I don't know if the camera's picking it up but you can start to see little flecks of um, stone in there Still a little bit wet at the bottom really but rain's coming so I need to get this uh, knot back and um, sheet it up so we'll just uh, give it a bit of a knock back now chances are the bottom here will still be uh, still be soft in a couple of days anyway because the, the wall is so wet down here that the lime water started to pull in for a few days right so that's basically what you do you just give it a good good old whack with your churning brush like that and then you put your hessian sheeting over it now and then you put your hessian sheeting over that next Hmm, somebody didn't put the brake on the tripod. There we go. Right, so we'll start again. So we'll put the Hessian sheeting onto that next. Um, I'll give it another another five minutes or so um, before I do that. And then I can give it a quick wet up and then put the Hessian on it. And I think we'll just let the rain do the rest. Um, it forecasts quite heavy rain for pretty much the next couple of days. So that's great, that's good, because what it'll do, it'll keep this nice and damp and allow it to set really slowly. Um, then hopefully by Monday we can start taking some of the sheeting off and um, move it on to the next bit. Mm. Right, so we're going to leave you here now. Not a lot more I can show you today. Um, so uh, we'll leave you at that. So I hope you enjoy or enjoyed indeed uh if you did it was that all important thumbs up and uh if you fancy hit that subscribe button and we shall see you next week for another episode of buggering about with old buildings